But I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. We'll begin the service. We'll sing number 12 in the garden. There's a great joy that we can all know and understand. And he says, though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of your woe. His voice to me is calling. And I know that's what his voice is to each and every one of us today, is calling to come to him, to put our faith and trust in him. He says he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. And you know we can look around and be involved in all kind of things here upon the earth and think of the joy that it might bring to us. But whatever it might be, it's temporary. It will pass away. You know, even when we, a young couple gets married, it brings great joy to them to be together one with the other. 
and our love together and them becoming one. And then if they're fortunate enough to have a child, the joy that it brings into their home, that great joy that they have there. And it will continue as we see that child grow and as the love for one another continues to grow, it continues to bring great joy. But that will all be gone in a few years. That young couple that became one, that young couple that married, a few years and they began to be old. And it passes by very quickly. And then a few more years, and they're gone from the earth. And that child that brought them such great joy now is older themselves. In a lot of cases, they have children and a family that they're bringing up. But we see that this is a cycle that God has created in the very beginning of time when he created man and woman to be together, to live together as a righteous family and living after God, after his ordinance. And if we'll do those things today, it will bring great joy. But the main thing that we need to be doing is looking to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. If we want that everlasting joy, that joy that will last throughout eternity, he says, I will bring give to you a comforter, I'll give to you great joy, I'll give to you peace, and I'll give to you eternal life. Friends, that is just hard for us to think about. When all we have known, all we have seen here upon the earth is a life, a short period of time, and then a death, and then another generation coming on right after that. That's all we've seen here in that natural part. But I know that there is people here, and there is people that have lived here and worshipped with us before that understood that spiritual part. And they were ready to leave here when the time came and to go on then to that immortal part to be in that part then of that everlasting life that we read about and we talk about every week and we want to encourage you in it knowing that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you can have that eternal life it's not what you do other than you have to accept him. You've got to go to him. You've got to repent. And then it's His by his blood we're saved. It's by the faith in Jesus Christ and God the Father. And by repenting of our sins, then we are able to have that everlasting life. Something that will never die. Something that we don't know anything about except in that spiritual part today. And we can have hope of it. We can be assured of that eternal life. And friends, I want you to all understand that. You can be assured of that eternal life by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That is the only way. And then when we receive that, then let that Spirit direct you from that day forward. And if we see that we have made the mistake, remember we have Jesus Christ there at the right hand of God the Father mediating for us. I just want to keep reminding us of all these things so that we can be encouraged in his word. But if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, if you don't know that of a surety in your heart today, you may have been baptized years ago. You may have said these things, but you want him to be your Savior. Be assured that that is the case with you because he has made the promise for us all, friends. And we will see victory 
if we just follow him and put our faith and trust there. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, the victory is assured through Jesus Christ our Lord. Give us that free gift from God the Father that is all there. And he will come back here to the earth and the righteous will rise to meet him in the air and the dead in Christ will be rising also. And he says, encourage one another in these words that you can be a part of that, that we can rise to meet him. Now we can understand that and let's read his word today and let's pay close attention to what he has to give to us so that we can get closer to him, get the things of the world out of our mind and put Jesus Christ there. Let's turn over to Matthew and open there this morning and I'd like to read some there. turn to the 12th chapter of Matthew. We'll start this morning at the 10th chapter, 10th verse of the 12th chapter of Matthew. And behold, there is a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man is there among you that shall have one sheep, and if, he, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do good, to do well on the Sabbath days. Now here, there were people there that their purpose of being around and coming to where Jesus was in a lot of cases was not to come to hear the word to try to understand it. They were coming to hear his word so that they might condemn him, might condemn something that he was saying. Now, what have we come out here today for? Did we come out here to hear the word of God? Or did I come out here to try to find something wrong with what was being done here today? I want to be sure that I've come out with a mind to be able to hear his word, to be able to preach his word, to be able to teach his word, just as he taught it in his day there. But he, was, he did not back down from these people. He said that there, they said, it is lawful to, is it lawful to heal on the seventh day that they might accuse him of doing something wrong, that they might accuse him of not following the law in that day. But he came here to fulfill the law. And what he had just said in the other part there, he had just showed them. Some of the things there because the people had walked through the cornfields, the wheat fields, rubbing it in their hand and eating some of the wheat and it was on a Sabbath day. But he says, do you not understand that I am the Lord over the Sabbath day? They said, that, and he gave them an example there of how David went and they gave him the showbread to his people. But he said, I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if you had known, and I'm reading this 6th and 7th verse there of, of this chapter, but if you had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would have not condemned the guiltless. And now what do we understand today? Do we understand that the Spirit of the Holy Ghost will be in someone that can help and to teach and to preach His Word to us today? And just as Jesus was there filled with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, 
And he said, if you, he was just chastising these people, if they would have known what he was talking about, he said there, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. He is the, he is the Lord over all. And when we say Lord, do we stop and think about that when we say that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior? Do you really understand what you're saying when you say that he's your Lord? Is he your What does the Lord do? What does a Lord do over a kingdom? He gives forth information. And he gives forth commandments in the way that he wants the servants to live in that kingdom. And they must abide by those things, that, by the laws that he puts out there. Now, Jesus Christ, we say he is our Lord. Is he lording over you? Are you willing to hear his word? Are you willing to lay aside the things of this world and to be at one with him, letting him be your Lord and directing you? That's what a Lord would be doing and then he goes on down here and he just gives them an example there when they were talking about it did, can you heal this man is it lawful to do those things they knew that this man was there he had a withered hand they knew that jesus christ had been around and he had been healing people and now what was about to take place jesus they knew he would heal him probably so they started trying to get ahead of him and say, is it lawful for you to do these things? Do you want to try to get ahead of the Lord's work today? Or do you want to be just as he says, wait upon the Lord? Wait upon him and he will give us all that we need. Then said he to the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth. And it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Can you imagine what was going on there? Can you imagine that here this group of people had come out to hear and Jesus Christ was there preaching and teaching and all of a sudden here they see this man that has the withered hand Jesus Christ comes in there and he says, stretch out your hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole. Imagine seeing that, that someone had a withered hand that they could not use at all. They went to, he came to Jesus. Jesus just told him, he says, stretch out your hand, and it was restored. It was made new. Right there in the presence of all these people that were trying to condemn him. They saw the wonderful miracle that took place. And what did they do? They went out and took counsel against him, how they might destroy him. But you know something? If we come in and we sit here and we hear his word, we hear the word that is being spoken, and we get up and we walk out and never accept his word, never accept, repent of our sins are we any different from these people they didn't accept him that he was jesus he was the son of god they saw that he had the power to heal if you come out and you hear the word you hear that he has the power to take away your sins he has the power to heal you and to quicken your spirit to make it alive Will you get up and walk out at the end of the service never acknowledging him and being just as these people where they went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. If you get up and walk away and have not repented of your sins there when he is so mercifully asking for us to put it into his hands we will be nothing more than just like these people. They saw it. They knew what had happened. And they rejected it. 
But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should, make, they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will show judgment unto the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Now that was prophesied way before Jesus had come here to the earth. This man just talking and telling about what Jesus would do and what he had done here upon the earth. But he, the thing there that I want us to understand, that there in that 15th verse again, he says, but when Jesus knew it, he knew what the people were trying to do, how the council was trying to destroy him. He withdrew himself from thence. He just went away from them. He didn't stay there and try to argue with them. He didn't stay there and try to convince them in their wrong. He just went away from them. Think about that. Jesus is putting his word out. If we don't want to hear it, it could be that he just leaves us alone and goes on. And then what is going to happen if we don't hear his word, if we don't have him to lean on, if we don't have his power to overcome, what can we do of our own self? Nothing. It must be that we repent and ask him to save us from our sins. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? They thought, Here is this man, and he comes up through the lineage of David. How can he do these things that he's doing? But listen again what took place. They brought to him. One that was dumb and blind. And what are we spiritually when we are born here upon the earth? We are blind to the truth. We are dumb. We can't hear or understand or speak about the truth because we do not have that spirit of the Holy Ghost within us. But what did he do to this man? They brought him there. He healed him. And then it says that the blind, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And I know spiritually, with his spirit, we can do the th same thing. We can speak, and we can hear, and we can see his truths, and understand his truths, and be a part of the one be a part of the true spiritual church of Christ do you want to be a part of that do you want to live in accordance with how he would have us to live we've talked so much and we've read so much about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye the pride of life and how we can overcome these things but when you look around, you hear his word, you see how he has taught and preached his word. But if you're not careful, you continue to live. You say that, yes, I am following Jesus. I come out and I sit down and I hear the word. But how are we living our life? This has been brought up over and over and over to us. How are we living our life? Do I truly want to put it into the hands of Jesus Christ? And I want to live in that manner. 
Lord, I want to try to hold on to a false hope that just is reading this week of how that he has told those that he would bring as strong delusions upon them that they may believe a lie. He will allow you to believe whatever you want to believe. But he will also give you a full knowledge and understanding of his work. He says, I will write it in your mind and in your heart. I will place it there that you can then see and know victory. But, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils, and Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? Just look, Jesus just tried to reason a little bit with them. They were saying, Yes, he's casting out these devils because he's a devil himself. But Jesus just went on then and he told them. He showed them. He says every kingdom divided itself is brought to desolation. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, to whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And that's where we need to all see and know and understand where the power comes from. Not from us, not from Satan, not from our children or whoever. He says, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And that's what we all have to know and understand today. He is cast out. He has taken away that spirit of Satan out of us. He's cast it out. He's taken and he's cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And he did that by the spirit of God, not by his own spirit. Jesus Christ has the spirit of God. He says, I cast out devils by the spirit of God then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And I know today that he is there and he can cast out those devils. He'll take that sin away from all that desire it. And he will be with them until the end if they desire it. And if they continue to be condemned in their sin, if they, if they go out and they find themselves in sin, that he will convict them of that sin and give them the opportunity then to come to him and he is quick to forgive. He's quick to take it away. Wherefore, I, I'm sorry, I skipped the verse. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man, and then he shall spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Listen carefully to that, friends. He that is not with me is against me. We may look around and say, well, I'm not doing things against his work. I'm just going through life. I'm okay. But he says that he that is not with me, he that is not with him spiritually, he that has not put our faith and trust in him, he says, is against me. Do you truly understand what he's saying? And if we're against him, do you think that we will be a part of his kingdom when we leave here? 
He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. If we are not gathering with him, if we are not gathering spiritually with Jesus Christ, we are just scattering abroad. There is nothing in our life that will help us out spiritually at that point. If we are not walking and drawing closer and closer to Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now think about these things. Listen, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And he makes it very plain and clear there to us that if we want to and if we want to serve him and if we see when we are convicted of our sins, we go to him. He says, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But then he goes on and he warns us of something else. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be. Now, if we receive that spirit of the Holy Ghost and then we blaspheme against it, what I'm saying is that we tread it under our foot. We say, I do not want it anymore. I do not believe it anymore. I am going back into the house that I came out of. He will allow you to do that. Again, in that first part, he's telling you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men if you will repent of it. And if you will keep him first and foremost there in your life, he says, I will be with you until the end. But here he's telling us there that there, there is a way. If we want to, just blaspheme against it and go back into our old ways and continue there and be overcome with it again. He says, that shall not be forgiven unto men. It's a fearful thing to think about. But I, don't, I want you to all understand that you can have power over that. When you see you have sinned, just as he says, they can be forgiven if you'll just take it to Jesus Christ. And don't let Satan just continue to tear you down, continue to take you on and on and on until he has overcome you. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. These are words of Jesus Christ. I want you to hear them and understand. And don't let it just tear you down. See the love that he has. See the power that he has. And don't let, he's warning us to not let this kind of thing happen to us. Whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man... It shall be forgiven him, he says. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, and I believe that what he's saying there is that now I have received that spirit of the Holy Ghost. And then I go back and I see, and I say, that Holy Ghost, there is nothing to it. That is just a scam. And it is nothing that I need, and I don't want it. That's what I'm looking at. And I want to go back and live in my old ways. That's speaking against the Holy Ghost that is within you. He says, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. These are words of Jesus. And I want you to hear it, I want you to understand it. But if he is there and he has convicted you of your sin... Go to him and repent of it and praise his name. Praise the name of Jesus Christ and God the Father. Either make his tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. 
For the tree is known by his fruit. And what he's talking about, he is calling this tabernacle, this body that we have here. He is calling and talking that, talking about a tree. He's saying that's a tree the way I interpret that. He says, either make the tree good and his fruit good and just naturally go out and look around and there are certain trees that bring forth good fruit and people say that is a good tree and it will bring forth good fruit or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. You know, just think about this also. You can have a tree there, and it's a good tree. It's, it's to, supposed to bring forth good fruit. And if, you, if the master of that garden, if he duns it, if he trims it, he looks after that, and he cuts the dead out and all these things, he says it will bring forth good fruit. But then that same, another tree, he says, or else make the tree corrupt. You could take a tree that should bring forth good fruit, but if it's not cared for and diseases come upon it, the fruit will be corrupt and it will be known of whether it's good fruit or whether it is corrupt fruit on that tree. I have seen recently with just a little bit of having some trees that bring forth fruit. And I have seen this basically worked right out there. But a tree there that has been taken care of and sprayed and kept so that the diseases can't come upon it, the fruit will be good. But one there that maybe has not been kept there, the same type tree, has not been kept, and disease come upon it, and the fruit not be good. What are we doing with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost today? Are we using that Spirit to keep the tree good so that our works here upon the earth, our spiritual works will be good so that every day that that Spirit of God is shining to others in you, not because of the good works that you have done, but because of the works that God has done in that Spirit, in that body. That is what we must be able to see. We must have that it is bringing forth that everything that we do, we do it with the love of God and with the love of our brother or sister. What can we do to do those things and to make sure that the fruit that is being produced in us is righteous fruit? And the only thing I can do there is just depending upon Jesus Christ. And I know that he will bring forth good fruits within me if I will depend upon him. He will bring forth good fruits. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh generation of vipers that's what he called those people there that were trying to put him down trying to put him to death those that were not accepting his words he says oh generation of vipers what is a viper a viper is a snake something that is deceitful he uses he was so deceitful that he deceived Eve there in the garden. And he's saying, Oh, ye generation of vipers. Because they are listening and they are being deceived and they are deceiving others. That's what these people were trying to deceive others and saying that this man is casting out devils by Beelzebub. 
not by God trying to deceive people into believing those things. And he said, oh, you generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The abundance of the heart. And he's talking about there the heart that out of the abundance of the spirit, out of the abundance of your soul, that's what comes out of your mouth. Have you ever thought about that much? What comes out of your mouth? Is it words? Is it good words? Is it words of exhortation? Is it words of encouragement? Or is it words to try to tear down? O oh, generation of vipers, how can you, listen carefully, being evil, they're evil because of they have not had that new heart. Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, listen to here, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Just that's again, all these words I'm speaking here, I'm reading, are the words of Jesus Christ. A good man or a good woman, a good boy or a good girl. And when he's saying good there, how can you be good? He says there is none good but, but one, God. And how can you and I do anything that's good? Being filled with His Spirit, having the new birth from God the Father. And that's what he's talking about to me. A good man, a man that has had that new birth out of the good treasure of his heart, filled with the knowledge and understanding of God that he said, I'll write it and I'll place it in your heart. I'll give you a new heart first. Then I'll write it and I'll place these things in your mind and your heart. And you will be able to bring forth good things by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. What is coming out of your life? What is, what is being shown daily to others? Is it the Spirit of God in you or the Spirit of Satan? I say unto you that every idle word that men speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's pretty strong for us. That's extremely strong if we stop and think about that. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And the way I look at that is that every word that we speak, maybe to try to tear down someone or to speak falsely about someone or to speak falsely about the word of Jesus Christ, to speak against the Holy Ghost. He says, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Listen at that. What do you want to give account when we stand before Jesus Christ? What do you want to give account for? What do you think will be there that you can give account to? Will it be the account of a righteous soul? Or will it be the account of evil? of unrighteousness. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account 
in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Friends, do you hear what he's saying there? What is coming out of our heart when we speak each day, when we're around other people? What is showing in our life? And we don't have to go out and try to tell people how righteous that we are. That's not what he's talking about at all. We should, I don't think that we should ever go out and do that. I want to be, we should be just like that publican was. That poor man that he stood on the street corner there. And he didn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. But he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. And then follow the Spirit. Just let the Spirit direct us. And everything that we say and do says, for by thy words, the word that comes out of your heart, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. What's it going to be with us, friend? These are serious things for me to think about. And, but I know this. That the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, the power of God that He has given to me and He'll give to you, He'll give to everyone that accepts Him, that power of God can and will overcome Satan. And it can and will give you the words to say that would be pleasing to Him. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Look right here. Here they were. They had heard all these things. They had seen the man's hand withered, hand withered. They had seen the dumb and the blind receive their sight. And here they see him. Certain ones turn back and they're saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Now they're saying that, Master, look at that, how deceitful that they are there. Trying to show him that we believe in you, but then turn right around, show us a sign. But Jesus answered and said unto them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Listen. An evil and an adulterous generation. Nothing true. They were evil in the spirit. They were not true to God. They were adulterous to God. And he says that generation... They seek after a sign. What are we seeking today? I want a sign. I don't want to have to say I've got to put my faith and trust in Jesus only if he'll come in here and he'll do a miracle and heal somebody or give them a sight or something to that effect. That's what these people were saying. I want it to be that I can have faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the promises that he promised, faith that he will give to me, a new spirit. That's what I want to have. And I know I can. And I know that he will give me that. If I truly ask him. Above all other things. That I want that above all things. That gener he says this generation though is an evil. And an adulterous generation. They're wanting to just see some sign. But this, all they're going to see is the prophet, the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he goes on and he tells what took place. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights 
in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. He was disobedient to God. But they threw him overboard. He told the people why. That they were, looked like they were going to be destroyed in that storm out there. And for them to cast him overboard. And he did. And God was merciful to him. And God caused a great fish to come. And to swallow him. And he was there, in there for three days and three nights. And then the, the fish put him back upon the land, vulnerable him upon the land. And he still had to go. And God said, now go and do as I told you to do. And those people repented. They repented of their evil deeds. And God did not destroy them. And he says, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment against this generation because you're hearing the word of God and not repenting. If that's the case, if you're hearing the word and not living the way you'd have for us to live. He says, the men of Nineveh, that's what was taking place with those men. They were not repenting. They were not accepting. And he says, these people repented because Noah, Jonah came and preached and told them what was about to happen. And I can tell you today, if you are not walking upright with him and you have not repented of your sins and received that new birth, I can tell you that these people will rise in judgment against you. But you can repent. And you can be a part of it just as they repented. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And that was Jesus Christ. He was greater. He is there telling us how we can do these things. And he will give us victory. He will give us power over sin. And he just tells other more things. He says, the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Greater than Solomon is here upon the earth. That was Jesus Christ. He was full of the Spirit, full of knowledge, full of understanding. And he's given us those things today. With the, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Now I want us to listen carefully to this, and not be deceived. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, when the unclean spirit's gone out of the man, how can the unclean spirit go out of a man? We were born with that unclean spirit. And the only way it can go out of the man is by the power of God, by being made new, having a new spirit come within us. And he says then once we have that new spirit, and he tells about other times there that after that we will be tried, that we will go through trials and temptations. He says he walks through dry places. That man that has that unclean spirit gone out of him, he's walking through dry places and he's seeking rest the way that he used to find it in the things of the world. He did not go in seeking rest from God by putting it into his hands and saying, Lord, just lead me through these dark, dry places. Lead me through them. He was seeking rest in his own way. And he did not find it. Then he saith, then he saith, 
I will return into my house from whence I came out. Now what's he talking about? Who's he talking about? He's talking about the man there that the unclean spirit had gone out of. And he says that he can't find rest. And he says he has come. He says he walketh through dry places and he finds none. Then saith he, I will return to my house whence I came out. And when he has come, he goes back into that. He findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. He finds there that there's nothing there for him spiritually at all. He finds that that's gone. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Then goeth he, the man, he goes and taketh with himself. He goes back into his house that he came out of. And seven other spirits, he says, more wicked than himself. The spirits of Satan comes within him. And they enter there and dwell there. And the last state of that man, now listen, he says that man, the last state of that man is worse than the first. Why? The last state of that man is worse than the first because before he had the opportunity he had the opportunity to know Jesus. He had the opportunity to repent. He had the opportunity to call upon him. But now he's gone back. He's blasphemed against the spirit of the Holy Ghost as we read about there earlier. He did not use the Holy Ghost to overcome. And he went back. He said, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I just want to go back and live in sin as I have. And he says the last state of that man is worse than the first. There were people that will tell you that he's talking about the spirit that went out of him. But he didn't say here that the last state of that spirit is worse than the first. He said the last state of that man, the man that the unclean spirit had gone out of at one time is worse than at the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Even so, he says, it shall be also unto this wicked generation. This wicked generation is the one that rejects Jesus Christ. Let's don't be a part of that. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren came and stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, Who is my brother, my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. Behold, my brother, my mother, and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. There are people here upon the earth today that teach us that this doctrine right here, these paragraphs that what he's talking about shows that Jesus Christ would be lenient toward the LGBT people of, our, of the world. He says there that he didn't have to have his mother and his brethren. He says, who are they? And he stretched forth his hand 
to his disciples, to the men there. And he says, Behold my mother and my brethren. And they turn that around to want you to believe these things. This is how deceitful Satan is and how that he will destroy, they have, he lets God lets those strong delusions come upon someone and they believe a lie and they will be cast into hell if they do not repent of these things. Behold my mother and my brother and he's just calling all of the righteous, the ones that are following him. That is his family. For whosoever, and he plays it very plain right here in this scripture. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Now is it the will of the Father in heaven that we live in a lifestyle that he says is an abomination? Friends, Listen to the word. For whosoever shall do the will, do the will. And when I say do the will, we hear his word and we follow it. Do the will of my Father which is in heaven, which is there for all of mankind. He created this earth. He created man. He created woman. He says, the same is my brother and sister and mother, those that has the spirit of the Holy Ghost, that hears his word and does them, hears his word and follows God and Jesus. He says, that is who is my brother and my sister and my mother. He didn't say anything about that those that believe a lie and those that are teaching a lie, and those that live in abomination with his word. He didn't say anything about them being his father, his brother, his mother, his sister. He didn't say that. But that's who the spiritual church of God is made up of. The people that hear his word and does it. Now, are we hearing his word? Are we willing to do his word here upon the earth? Are we willing to just follow through with all of his word and his commandments and his duty or for us to do here upon the earth? Are we willing to follow through with that as we go through this, this life? I want to turn over to the 15th chapter and read a few words there. It just shows how some of the things here of how people just did not want to believe, did not want to just follow him. Starting there at the first verse, he says, Then came to Jesus Scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Again, just look at the little silly, frivolous thing that they would try to get up against the word of God. And is that things that will be in us today that we'll try to get up some little frivolous something that we can hold against the word of God and how it is presented to us. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father and mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect through your tradition. 
just some little frivolous thing here, but he says Jesus just went over to it and he just reasoned with them. He showed them what their tradition and what they held on to and the laws that they had changed in that day, how they went against the tradition of God and how they went against his word. And I know that that's what's happening throughout the world today. You hypocrites. I told them very plain and clear. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That is a serious verse to me, friends. That is extremely serious. And I want us to everyone, and we read this not long ago, but I want us to every single one examine ourselves with these two verses there, the 8th and the ninth. Let's read that again. Well, first of all, let's just start at the 7th because that's where he says, he says, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That heart that he says, I'll give to you a new heart. That heart that he said, I'll put my words and I'll put my knowledge and understanding in your mind and in your heart. Is it far from him? Someone that has that, they're walking close. It's not. But he said, you're those that just have that lip service or that they come out. But then when they go outside, when they go away, what are they involved in? The things of the world. How do they dress? It looks like the world very scantily and all of these things in the places you go. Is it the places that the world goes? The things you say, is it coming from the heart? Is it true? Is it righteous? Is it right? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And I know, my friends, that that is taking place throughout the world today. In vain, he says, they do worship me. Friends, that scares me. For people that honor him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. In vain, they worship him. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Or just doing things that's contrary to his doctrine. Contrary to his word. Listen carefully, my friends, to these things. Pay attention to it. Let Jesus Christ and the Father do a thorough examination in you. And you can have assurance of eternal life. You can know you can have it. And you can know that you have that spirit. You can know that that spirit will direct you. But in vain, he's saying there, and listen again, in vain they do worship me. Don't worship him in vain, but worship him in truth and in righteousness and in love. Let him just direct you in all the things that we talk about. Where we go, what we say, how we dress. All of these things, let his spirit direct you. And we will see victory in Jesus Christ. We will bring this meeting to a close. We will sing.
Number 329, stand up for Jesus. And I want you to all to listen to that, to do that. If you are not, if you have not, stand up for him today and commit to him by coming forward as we sing number 329. baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and may the Lord receive stand up for Jesus there's so much in that song there's so much in the words that we've read today and be encouraged in but I want to say the, the trumpet call obey obey his call to come to him the arm of flesh will fail you we talked about that right in the beginning dare not trust in your own put on the gospel armor put on that shield of faith take that first 
and watching unto prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Just put it into him. He with, he with the king of glory shall reign eternally. We that put our faith and trust in the king of glory, Jesus Christ, we will reign eternally with him. Praise his name. Praise what he did for us so that we can see victory. Let us pray. To God the Father, we come to you this morning and we just thank you for all the wonderful words of life that you have for us that we can hear and that we can use. We can put our faith and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. And we ask you to be with all the people that is here today to help them to move up. The young lady that has come up today to help her to walk closer to you, to just go to you and you will forgive. You will give her victory. Thank you, Lord. And just be with us in the upcoming days that your will be done in us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.